We are ready. All Show right. Show us what you got. So obviously we're doing a, we're demonstrating revision arthroplasty here, which is kind of cervical arthroplasty 2.0. Um, as you saw from my first talk, the, re the revision rate is less than 1.5%, at least in our series. So it's rare, but with all the tens, if not hundreds of thousands of arthroplasties being done, if you're a center, like Landman and TBI, you're going to need to know how to do revisions. Um, so what we've got here is we've got a disc in, and um, obviously there are different etiologies for revisions. Let's just say this one is is mechanical. Um, Scott, orient, you know, orient us for cephalad, quadrad, okay. so and what we got had. is superior, inferior, disc that we're going to explant and do a revision for, and we're going to say this is for mechanical reasons, not for infection or osteolysis. So um, exposure, say, you can go through the same incision or opposite side, um, really doesn't make a difference, whatever you're comfortable with. But once I get the disc exposed, the first thing I want to do is distract so I can get it out. So I put my pins in first. And put these in. And that's what makes uh, one of the reasons why cervical revision is uh, a little bit easier than lumbar is we have the ability to use external distraction. And we'll get a little distraction going here. And obviously you want to know which disc you're removing because you might need the original company's removal tool, which in this case, um, Sentinel is nice enough to give us a removal tool uh, to take this disc out. And like Dr. Ziegler said, that's one of the biggest game changers with cervical versus lumbar is, is the ability to revise. So we engage one in play, and then we'll take this shaft here. Oh, I was just going to put the inserter back in. That's fine too, yes. Yeah, so if we've got the inserter, and you can, get, you can always get... You can get the tip? Yeah, if we can get the inserter back in, that's one thing. If, you know, certain discs, if they're all, um, if they've mechanically failed, you can just take them out piecemeal. Usually it's easier to get the uh, poly out first, but I am not going to ruin this uh, disc. This, they were nice enough to give it to us, so I'm just going to put the inserter back on, which doesn't seem to be going on. So there we go. Okay. And... Uh, because we've, we've distracted, you're done. So um, what I have been doing, just because there's a finite incidence of C. acnes, I, once I get the disc out, I take cultures for C. acnes. We can talk about that in the discussion uh, a bit. Oftentimes, there's no clinical signs of infection, but C. acnes will, will culture out. After two weeks, you have to have the lab hold it for an extra couple weeks. Um, you know, and then if there's any fibrous tissue back there, and depending on where the original dis disc was done, sometimes they don't do as thorough a discectomy as you might do in your clinic. Um, you can always go and do more foraminotomies, which I'm not going to do here. Um, you know, take the take the scar off in front of the uh, of the epidural space if you need to do that. Um, it definitely is not as adhesed as it is in lumbar, so it doesn't seem to be as much of a problem. But if a disc is coming out for mechanical reasons, you assess the mechanical integrity of the end plate, and if either the pathology or your technique of taking it out hasn't um, uh, boogered it up too much, and you've got nice end plates, which hopefully you can see here, these end plates are great, um, you can either preoperatively template the disc space like you would for an index case, or um, once we took out the prosthesis, you can just read the, the size on it. We know it's 16 millimeters deep, so I'm going to trial a 16 millimeter deep simplify here. Um, we were talking earlier, I, I've got about three or four, maybe five cases where I have revised to, to simplify. It's got a nice low profile keel, um, and it's a nice revision disc. Let's go ahead and do that. And Stop. you can see here, trial wise, this is fine. Um, 
the t disc we took out was a five millimeter height, so this is a five millimeter height as well. So Scott, we do that. how much work do you do on the end plates? Do you try to freshen them or? Uh... Well, yeah, as I said, if, if there's some fibrous tissue or disc remain, um, you want to get it to look just like a, a first time disc replacement with, with the cartilage gone, with any disc gone, and you're just looking at, at, uh, at the uh, bony end plates. And you, but you don't want to violate it like a first timer because then you're going to risk subsidence. So um, that's a great point. So with the Simplify, you do need to cut a little keel, and I usually let down the distraction, not all the way, but a little bit, to cut the keel. And it does not have a safety, so you need to check on the C-arm to not put it in too deep. Like that. <laughs> Okay, so that's where you want it to be, and uh, then there's a slap hammer to get it out. And then we've got the prosthesis again, just and I'll usually distract a little bit again. And find your little slot cuts, slot cuts. The uh, simplify has. Three teeth on the front, at the top, two at the bottom. I like to just look at the dome. The dome always goes up. So, and if you wanted to get a little extra lordosis, you, this is this has flat end plates. You can get lordotic end plates with this implant. And the trick with the implant is you get it in about a third to halfway, like yay, and then you have to remove the inserter and do a final insertion. And I'll try not to push this one into the canal. We'll watch carefully. Are you still distracted, Scott? Are you back to neutral? Pardon? Are you still distracted or yeah, back to neutral I mean, now? I usually don't get it back to neutral till I'm done putting it in, but I, I, I can I can take a few clicks off. Let's see again. And we're almost all the way back. I don't want to wheel on it, put it in the canal. All right, and that's uh, and then then at this point, then you take all the distraction off, and and be done. So, that's how I revised to to uh, simplify from a non-keeled to a keeled, and I'm gonna pass the baton over to Todd at this point. Thanks, Scott. So um, I am gonna destroy. The Hang on, we got Before a question. Start, Todd Allman had a question. Yes. Sorry, just quick thing on the simplify keel cut. Do you compress? the disc a little bit because i've noticed that when you use that keel cutter it tends to push the vertebra away and i don't know if you have a strategy of managing that so I, I i i what i do is i take a couple clicks off the distraction do i compress no because once the once the body uh, muscle tone returns after anesthesia or they get upright even if there's a little gap there it closes down just with with gravity and muscle tone Okay, Todd Lyman. All right, well, thank you. So just to orient uh, on this cadaver, if we have the cameras on this one. Um, over here, is that what I'm seeing? Yeah, we see uh, we see you and then we see the uh, cadaver, the specimen. So just show us where uh, superior and inferior is. So superior is here. Do you see me? No. Oh, uh, yeah. Switch we cameras. <clears throat> yep, we see you. You see me now? Yeah, we do. It's still moving over. Oh, there we go. We're seeing you and the specimen. Okay, so here's cephalad. Got it. And caught at. Um, so top of the head. Okay, so when <laughs> oh there it is, stayed in. Okay. When these implants are in, you know, we just put these in, so it's a little yeah. bit of cheating. But yeah. if this implant's been in a while, the end plates are going to be fixed to the bone, typically. And whether you're revising for numerous reasons, you know, poor poor placement, uh, residual compression, uh, prior surgeon didn't do a full decompression, <laughs> various things. Now, I'm, I've am i never been a big fan of cast bar distraction uh, just because the pins have to be perfect because if the pins aren't perfect, you know, if they're skewed, you're going to turn your vertebral body at different angles or if they're rotated, you'll actually rotate the vertebral body at times. And you can 
now align your facets. So I have a, a custom distractor that I had uh, uh, made by Sentinel. So I'll put this in. It's like the old um, Cloward distractor, except the tips are, are flat and they're designed to have a stop. And I'll put them in next to the implant. Now, sometimes you'll need to take the drill and uh, just widen a little bit on the side of your implant to be sure you can get your spreader in. And I like to put the spreader in on the side and then open the space directly. And uh, you'll see how it opens. And you can see how the dome uh, becomes more exposed with that distractor. And then... Um, so Todd, you can always catch enough end plate that, to give you distraction force? I'm sorry? You can always catch enough lateral end plate to give you I've good distraction I've always been able to force. catch enough end plate. Sometimes I'll even put it on the metal portion of the disc and open on the metal port and on the lateral side. That's what I was going to ask you, yeah. Yeah, and sometimes I'll put it yeah, right along here and catch the metal uh, end and put this distractor on there, especially if you have somebody with poor bone quality. Sure. Um, now this is loose in there, but it, it, normally this would be adherent. And uh, then I would take the drill and I would just cut, I would cut the dome right off. And I just take the drill and I irrigate and I cut the dome off because trying to explant this straight out with the, with the removal device is very difficult typically, because even when you disarticulate it from the bone, if the dome is there, it's still very resistant and even grabbing it with the inserter. Now they pop out here and you can see they're loose because they're not osseo integrated. The key thing is this osteotome. So we're gonna assume that these end plates are fixed to the bone. And if you put a narrow osteotome and one or two taps and every time that whole end plate will just disarticulate. And I try to do both of them like this, each side, and then you can see, and then I'll, I'll turn it a little bit and disarticulate it. But you're trying not to cut bone. You're just getting into that plane between the bone and the metal. Exactly. You want to, you know, get a floral shot right here, shoot there, and you'll see you want to just get right under that and lift that as you drive your chisel in. And once you've done that, I just take a needle holder or, um, yeah, a needle holder usually, and you can grab a hold of one of the end plates and, and, and it'll slide out. Now that there's no dome, you take out the superior, then you can grab the inferior and take that out and you've got your space. You can then go on with your spreader in there and uh, do further decompression if you need to, uh, clear things up. Um, you know, this is a bit of a, a domed end plate, so I might create a little bit more of a parallel end plate. When I do my revisions, I prefer to do um, the old Protus C, the original. The reason being that sometimes, well, let's see what this looks like. This, this is a six? Yeah, that'll, that'll be fine. I'm gonna take the spreader off. Um, and uh, let's see about putting that a little deeper. Uh, uh, shot there, please. Yeah. So I could probably take more of that, but yeah, go. Let's go to uh, large deep. Me a six large deep. Shoot there. Patient's a bit sclerosed. So is that a large, and you're just going to large deep to get two more millimeters of depth? Yeah. And we'll get a little more depth, a little bit, bit better end plate coverage, and it is important on a revision that you get excellent end plate coverage because you need, you need to get, to prevent subsidence, you want more end plate coverage and uh, you want to get, um, as much width covered as well. So the more you, you can do, the larger the implant you can get in, the better. So floral that, see that looks a little better on AP uh, uh, positioning, as well as uh, you'll get a wider implant. And now once you have your trial in, then you can go on and make your, is this a six? Um, cuts, I'm not gonna bother with uh, midlining this exactly. Um, 
bullpens? Yeah, well, it may not matter, but uh, then I like this because often the bone may be very sclerotic if they've had prior fusions. So using, a, an, like if you want to revise to an SK, the chisel, as I mentioned earlier, you may want to deviate. You may get miscuts, which has happened to me. But with, with this, because you actually are drilling a shot there, you know, you're going to see where you want to be. Shoot there. That seems very short on my drill. Is that, is that, this must not be down all the way. This is not seated. There you go. Is this seated now? Yep. All right, let me reset. Let's redrill that. There we go. All right, shoot that. Yeah, there we go, better. Oh, you're right, normally we would put the uh, stop. I usually put a dull pin on the opposite side before I make the other drill cut to keep things parallel. So once that's in, you can <clears throat> take off your drill guide. Do you secondary chisels or do you use this? No, I don't use secondary chisels. Mm -hmm. And I also, at this point, I don't really have any traction in here, nor I don't use this either. I usually have a, a harness on the patient's head. I have anesthesia pull, which opens the space what I like about that is as you're distracting the space, it opens naturally and the patient's vertebrae are gonna separate based on the facet alignment. Whereas with the Caspar pins, you may force malalignment of the facets by, by over distracting. Whereas if you just pull and allow the patient's head to distract naturally, you get a nicer pull. Hard to distract this because uh, there's no head on this patient. Is this up? Yes, that's up, up is up. And uh, that's my distraction there. <laughs> uh, floral shot there. Shoot there. Shoot there. Shoot there. Picture. Yeah, that's probably okay. Let's see how we look with the distract. So yeah. your target is the posterior intervertebral body line, Scott, uh, Todd? Is the posterior vertebral body? The posterior intervertebral body line. That's your your yes your goal. Uh, I'm I'm seeing this one a little further back. Uh, shoot there. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, we're okay. A little anterior osteophyte, so you could shave down, make it look pretty. But you've got you've got good alignment here. I could drive the upper one back a hair, but I don't think it's really necessary. But just for a demonstration, we could just show, you know, the the uh, impactor tool here to push the device back. I actually like it better on the old guard than on the new one. Shoot that. Yeah, and see, I can move that upper end plate shoot again. Yeah, now you see it's it's a little bit better aligned. And I'd probably just leave that alone. Let's do an AP shot. See if we're close to midline. I, I didn't do APs. The other thing I do when I'm doing the AP shot with the trial in is I, rem and it's kind of a hassle, but I always remove all the retractors, yeah, a little further over, yeah. I remove all the retractors so that I get a real clean AP. Um, thanks, and uh, um, and that's sort of how I I like to do the revision myself and 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 switch to uh, different discs. But this is usually my go-to disc. I, I don't switch to Simplify often. Um, I like a keeled implant on a revision. I think that you've got a lot more. Um, Stability with the keel, especially on lower cervical segments, C5, 6, C5667, where you you have you have a slope angle, you may have some shear force, so um, that can be an issue. But yeah, Sen good. Sentinel's been building this little distractor for me, so I have several of these. I have long ones, short ones that I I throw in and just open the space up. They've been very helpful. Any questions? Anybody have any questions for Dr. Landman, Dr. Blumenthal? Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Yeah, it was great. Great demonstration. Thanks.